as a coach who works with coaches as well as authors, I totally understand running in to content creation block. Whether it's you creating a post online, creating a course, creating or writing a book, the idea of constantly having to produce content without burning out, without exhausting yourself, without overthinking, without wondering if what you're creating as well is something that we all run into. And so today, what I want to do is I want to share five simple strategies that are going to support you at moving past creator's block so that you can create content that converts and engages your audience in new and expansive ways. So the first strategy that will support you at moving past writers or creators block is to be able to create consistently. One of the biggest mistakes that I find that my clients make is that they'll create, you know, one day and then they won't create for several months or they'll create, you know, in a spurt and they'll create for a week and then they'll fall off. I personally ran into that just about six months ago when I was creating every single Sunday and then I took six weeks off after surgery. And don't get me wrong, the break was much needed, but it was definitely hard to build that momentum back up. So what I always suggest to my clients and I'm going to suggest to you is to make it a routine, to make it a habit. Our brain has what we call neural pathways and the more we travel these different pathways, the easy, easier they are to be accessed. And so when we create a routine, when we create that consistency, it's easy for our body to fall in line with it. So one of the things that I do that support me at being consistent with creating is I have found a place that allows me to be really focused and clear-minded to be able to create. And I have found a day of the week where I create consistently. And this allows me to get into that routine and the habit of making consistency easy. So the second strategy is to talk to your audience. Do not ever assume that just because you have a great idea that you should run with it if you are not sure that that's actually what your audience is seeking. Let's say, for example, you're a divorce coach, right? You're teaching people how to heal after divorce and you create an entire course about that. But what people are really looking for is how to hire the right lawyer after divorce or whatever it may be. Now you're essentially climbing the ladder against the wrong wall. So what you want to do is you want to open up conversation with your audience. Ask them, what is it that they're seeking? What is it that they want to learn? What have they already tried before? What has worked? What isn't? And what are they looking for to be changed or shifted? Or what transformation are they seeking? When you talk to your audience, this actually helps to inform your creating. So this makes sure that you're not creating in vain, but you're creating content that is actually going to resonate with your tribe. The third strategy is to be open to inspiration. The truth is inspiration can come from anywhere. But a big mistake that we make is we spend so much time looking for inspiration that we actually overlook it, if that makes sense. And so one of the things that I have learned that has really helped me get my wheel spinning is when I move my body, I get inspired. It seems like all of these intuitive nudges and all of these intuitive ideas hit. I have a client on the other hand who gets crazy ideas in the shower. When I say that inspiration can come from anywhere, I truly mean that. So let me ask you, are you open to receiving that inspiration? And if you're not, how can you make room to be open to it so that you can hear when things are dropped into your spirit, when things come about, when these coincidences happen to really give you that inspiration that you need to start creating? The next strategy that will help you overcome creator's block is going to go against the grain, but it's to take a break. So another mistake that I find in this space is that we feel like we have to work, 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 hard work, hustle, and that's the only way that we can succeed. And while I, I will tell you that hustle and hard work will get you some of the way, it'll definitely burn you out, it'll make you bitter, and it'll make it hard to maintain that momentum. And so one of the things that I have now given myself permission to do that has been a total game changer for me is to take a break. I never force myself to create content and if I'm feeling a major block, I don't force myself to create content just to check a proverbial box. I create content in a way that feels aligned because I believe the energy I carry when I create it is also the energy that my audience is going to receive when they also are looking at my content. Now. I'd like to touch on this concept of taking a break. That doesn't mean that you don't work for an entire year and you're like, okay, there's my break, right? It really is all about that balance. And so your break could be something as simple as using the Pomodoro technique. 
If you're not familiar with that, it's an amazing concept. It's also known as the tomato technique, but it's an amazing concept that you work for about 25 minutes, you take a five minute break. You work for 25 minutes and you take a five minute break. And the point is, is that our brain cannot focus for an extended period of time. And so when you're giving yourself those breaks, you're actually coming back more refreshed, more renewed, restored, and ready to take action and ready to create. That's just one strategy. For me personally, my down days are Sundays and I do nothing on Sunday. So I don't get on social media. I do not create. I do not cook. I do not clean. I don't do anything. But what it allows my brain to do is just rest. And I just do totally mindless activities. It might be a Netflix show. It might be going on a walk. It may be staring at the wall. But what I've realized is this downtime actually creates more product productivity and more inspiration throughout the week and it gives me a lot more momentum. So what you want to do is you want to consider how you can build breaks into your schedule, into your routine to create that balance so that when you have that break, again, you're ready to take action with a renewed sense of excitement and you're ready to share your genius with the world. Finally, the fifth and last strategy that I have for you that will help you circumvent creator's block is to stop buying into the idea or the belief that things have to be perfect. If you allow yourself to believe that things have to be perfect before you put yourself out there, that is a surefire strategy to throw in that proverbial towel before you ever even begin and to self-sabotage. Here's the thing, if you're waiting for all your T's to be crossed, all your I's to be dotted, you could be waiting for the rest of your life, right? And there's someone somewhere waiting on you to do what you're called to do. So when you play small, when you allow limiting beliefs to take over your life, you're not only selling yourself short, but you're selling the entire world short. On top of that, there's no guarantee that if you continue to wait for it to be perfect, that things will ever get there. And so you're also missing this opportunity to do what you know that you're called to do. So when you find yourself buying into the belief that things have to be perfect, give yourself permission to put it out there, whether it's a post, whether it's the start of a course or whatever it may be, put it out there because you never know who you can bless just by sharing something that you thought was mediocre that they may think is totally life-changing. And one little caveat that I'd love to add to this, limiting beliefs are going to surface. They come all the time, especially when you're moving yourself out of your comfort zone. That part of you that kept you safe and that kept you playing small will start to rear its ugly head and remind you all the reasons why you should stay exactly where you were. But let's be real, the limiting beliefs that you had never got you to where you wanted to be. So they're not serving you and they're not serving your future you. And so one of the things that I like to do when I notice those limiting beliefs beginning to surface is I start to remind myself the truth related to those limiting beliefs. So it may be, you know what, no one would ever wanna read my book. But then I remind myself, you know what, I just did a live yesterday and people were talking about how motivational I was and how encouraging I was. It may be that you made a post that no one engaged with, but you know that this is great work. And so you try another post, you try a different picture with it. And next thing you know, you have two people in your DMs telling you like, wow, that really moved me. Thank you, thank you. Or I never learned that before. Just continue to keep pressing and remind yourself that those limiting beliefs are not the truth. And I know earlier I mentioned five different strategies that you can begin to implement to avoid creator's block, but one popped up in my spirit as I was talking and I realized how important this is. But what you take in is what you put out. So if you want to avoid creator's block, you have to watch what you're consuming. If you're watching a lot of low vibration TV shows and listening to a lot of low vibration music, you're going to notice that your energy likely matches that. So for me, when I'm in a big creation season, I'll listen to podcasts that are really motivational and encouraging. I make sure that I read books that are online that are informing what it is that I'm creating. I'm making sure that I'm connected with the right people so that again, I'm feeling super upbeat, super high vibe, and that reflects in my content. So considering that, what are you watching? What are you listening to? And who are you around? And how do you think that's impacting your content? All in all, creating and the process of creation does not have to be complex. But unfortunately, we overcomplicate the process when it's not necessary. We can make it fun, we can make it exciting, we can make it expansive, and we can make it in a way that it changes the lives of the people with whom we work with. And so this is your official call 
to stop playing small and go out there and share your genius with the world. Like I mentioned before, there's someone somewhere waiting on you to do what you're called to do. It's time to go after it.